Hello, my fellow acolytes, my name is Lewis, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Cult of Wands. In today's video, I'll be showing you all how to paint skin. And for models today, I'll be using this kid-bashed cultist for my uh, creations of Bile Army. For this model, I suggest a satin white primer. And for our first paint today, we will be using Citadel's Contrast Free Slayer Flesh. That's a mouthful. Don't be shy when applying this to the model, just make sure that you're covering everywhere that you want to be skin. Well, I know what you guys may be thinking. Oh, Louis, why contrast? Well, it's really perfect for painting skin, specifically just base coats, because when, you f uh, when skin folds, it gets darker around that fold, and contrast makes those folds more visible. Letting that model dry, here's what we have so far. As you can see, those skin folds are looking really nice and visible, as I said. For our next paint, we'll be using this Liquitex Iron Oxide and Citadel Zandri Dust. And, to apply it, this tiny brush. Take the Iron Oxide and put a little drop on the palette as well as some Zandri Dust. We're going to be mixing this in a 1 to 1 ratio to create our first highlight layer. Applying this highlight, just make sure that you're picking out the areas that you want to highlight later, as this step is crucial and cannot be changed once it is down. For me, these highlights are going to be on each of the very pronounced muscle groups, uh, specifically at the top. So we're going the back, the biceps, the shoulders, then glutes, and the head, uh, as well as the calves and a little bit on the heel. Once you feel satisfied with how much highlight you have down already, add some Ushapti bone to your palette and then mix that in a one-to-one -one ratio with your red oxide. This highlight layer can be varied with how much red oxide you put into this mixture, but it is still going to serve the same purpose, and that is to pick out all of your raised detail. If you are happy with how it looks, or want it to just be this color with some highlights, I would add more of that red oxide to it to get a pinker color. However, for the next steps, I'm going to have this really, really bright and visible highlight, and you will understand why in just a second. Oh, I should probably mention this takes forever, um, because after 10 minutes, here's what we're looking at for uh, highlights. Now that I've built up anticipation, it's time to figure out what I meant by you will find out. And what we're finding out is this Magos Purple here from the Citadel Contrast line works really well as a red glaze, and it dulls down as well as blends together our highlights as well as the base contrast and our red oxide highlight. Magos Purple is a very, very transparent contrast color, and using it in this way allows us to get that nice red and lively glow that skin usually has, but that's not grim dark enough. So in our next step, we're going to be coming back to highlights. Yes, I said it, highlights again. Don't worry, there's another one. Here's what the model looks like so far with that Magos Purple fully dried. As you can see, it's a really nice red color, but we're going to be messing all that up with our Zandri Dust and Ushefti Bone highlights as we were doing before. This time, however, we are going to be applying the Zandri Dust highlight like we were doing with the Ushefti Bone highlight from before and picking out those raised details. When doing this, however, make sure that that paint is not getting into those little pockets of shadow left behind by our previous steps, as we want those to be visible going into the last and f last steps of this project. Like our previous highlight step, this one takes a little while to finish, but it looks really good when done. Next, we're going to be using this Drakenoff Nightshade to pick out our shadows. Apply this paint to the lower parts of your model, making sure that you're getting everywhere where the highlight is not. And then also to add a little bit more complexity to the model, blend the wash into your highlights. Be thoughtful with where you are doing that because like in this example here, I get it on the highlight and I really don't want it there. So I had to wipe it off with my finger and you want to minimize the amount of times you touch that model before you finish because that really could screw up your paint job or even scrape off some of your paint. Let that dry, and here's where we're at, ready for our final highlight layer. As you can see, the blue is a little overpowering in some areas, and this final highlight layer is there to correct some of our mistakes. We're going to be going super fast here because you know the drill. We're just taking our Ushapti bone 
and our Xandri dust, mixing that with the iron oxide, well, red oxide, and just hitting all the areas that need a little bit more highlight. These corrections serve to bring a little bit more life back into our model and add that contrast that is so desired in our minis. And with that, we are done. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share with your friends. And in that comment section, I want to see some more suggestions for what you guys want to see in the next videos. Until next time, I've been Lewis from the Cult of Ones, and I will see you all in the next video.